Egypt celebrates Revolution Day, the sixth anniversary of the overthrow of King Farouk, with President Gamal Abdel Nasser smilingly accepting the acclaim of a quarter of a million in Cairo. He had but recently returned from two weeks of travel that took him to Belgrade, Moscow, and Damascus, while the Mideast crisis reached fever pitch. Does Nasser, Arab nationalism will sweep the Middle East, but he'll be happy to join Khrushchev and Eisenhower in the proposed summit meeting at the United Nations. In Lebanon, Robert Murphy, the State Department's ace troubleshooter, met President Camille Shamoun, opening his task of mediating some compromise between Lebanon's clashing factions that would permit withdrawal of United States troops. New presidential elections have already been deferred to permit the choice of a candidate acceptable to all. The Mideast was quiet, but American evacuees from Iraq were arriving in Rome, 10 hours away. In the first group were 36 women, 54 children. Nearly 300 Americans have left since a brief but violent revolution. Jordan still observes mourning, nine days after the Iraqi rebels killed King Faisal and government leaders. But otherwise, in the capital city of Amman, business went on as usual, with no sign that Jordan too was gravely menaced. Until the arrival of British troops, all flags at half mast, and King Hussein, in his first appearance for the camera since the crisis began, demanded that the slaying of his cousin, King Faisal, be punished. Hussein's assassination has been called for in Nasser-controlled radio broadcasts. American economic aid bolstering the Jordan regime takes the form of an immediate airlift of desperately needed oil and gasoline. Giant Globemasters fly in a thousand tons daily to replace the supply cut off by rebel activities in Iraq and Lebanon. A grant of seven and a half million dollars in addition has been made available to help out young King Hussein. But the focus of attention in the Mideast crisis was shifted to the world stage by Nikita Khrushchev after the situation in fact began to stabilize with a demand for a big power summit meeting. The upshot of an exchange of letters with ICE, prospective summit meeting under United Nations auspices. It promises to be the most portentous international meeting since World War II.